And so it is because we have a divinely active God that wonderful things are happening. It is because our perfect, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God is expressing all of his qualities in perfect balance that wonderful things are taking place. Now this one and only divinely active God does all the doing in the universe. Not only does he do all the creating, but all the knowing, all the understanding, all the expressing. He does all the relating, the associating, the environing. The definition of mind in the Glossary of Science and Health, found on page 591, line 19, reads, Deity, which outlines but is not outlined. God doing all the planning, all the outlining, is a very important basic truth which we must accept in our expectation of wonderful things happening. I doubt if there's any one statement I have, I have made more often than this one. God's plan for man is in operation, and there is no other power or presence that can interfere with it. I wish to discuss this statement with you this morning in relation to wonderful things taking place. You know, there isn't one of us who at some time during a year doesn't need to let that glorious truth operate as, in his experience to find the right job, select the right apartment, buy the right car, choose the right university, join the right church, take the right vacation, marry the right person. In any one of these decisions, we must rejoice consistently that God's plan for us is in operation. To be absolutely sure that it is God who is doing the outlining and not me, myself, there are four basic truths I love to contemplate, comprehend, and rejoice in. These truths were unfolded to me at a time when I thought I had a problem that was beyond solution. I just couldn't see how even God could have an answer. It was at that time that I took a little boy in his mother's sailing. It was the three-year-old child's first experience in a sailboat. He was impressed by the expanse of the water, and he was besieging his mother with questions. Is the water over my head? Is the water over my brother's head? Over your head? It was getting a little deeper all the time. Is it over Daddy's head? Yes, it is over Daddy's head, the mother replied. The little fellow then thought for a moment, and then with a look of absolute confidence he announced, But it isn't over God's head. Well, that night when I had an opportunity to be alone, I went outdoors, sat under the stars and prayed. I knew that what the little boy had said was a message from God for me, that my problem wasn't over God's head. I turned wholeheartedly to my Heavenly Father. I let Divine Mind talk, and I listened. It was then that these four precious but powerful points were revealed to me. First, pursuant to Science and Health, page 60, line 20, soul has infinite resources with which to bless mankind. Therefore, don't ever start working on a problem with a limited sense of things, such as jobs are few and far between. There are just no eligible men my age who are Christian scientists. Or, there is only one school for me, but I don't know which one. Begin with the infinitude of God's goodness. Remember that His resources are infinite. The possibilities for income are beyond measure. The possibilities of employment are infinite. Opportunities to serve are infinite. Because all the resources of God do not lie idle. He uses his infinite resources to bless you. No matter what your need might be, it is tremendously thrilling to start out with the realization of the infinite possibilities whereby your Heavenly Father might bless you. Of course, because the resources are God's, they must all be necessarily beautiful, harmonious, wonderful, good, and perfect in every respect. Rejoice that you are rich. You have, you have inherited the kingdom. In Luke we read, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Second, divine mind, the all-knowing intelligence, knows which resources best meet the needs of every individual. Jesus tells us, 
Your Heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Isn't it wonderful that we can trust God and know that His planning is far beyond anything that we could ever humanly plan? God, divine mind, employs His resources for man in perfect wisdom. And therefore, for one who understands this, no avenue is blocked, no, re no right desire unsatisfied, no need unprovided. However, it is at this point of demonstration where we must stand steadfast in refusing to outline. We must rely completely upon the decision of our Heavenly Father as to what is best for us. We must not even be guilty of saying, Heavenly Father, thy will be done, but I just kind of hope it will work out this way. No, we must pray without any reservation. Not my will, but thine be done. <clears throat> Sometimes in order to be absolutely certain that I am letting God do all the planning, I will pray this way. God, I don't care whether I dig gold in Alaska or lasso cattle in Argentina, scrub floors in a benevolent association, or take in washing in Timbuktu. All I ask, Father, is that your plan for me be in operation. And then I rejoice that it is God's plan, and God's plan only that is in operation, and absolutely nothing can interfere with it. Oh, with what complete assurance, freedom, and confidence can we face the future, knowing that God is caring for us in every experience. Third, love inspires, illumines, designates, and leads the way. Science and Health, page 454, line 18. Isn't this a wonderful thought? You know, so often you will hear an individual say, but how am I to know what God's plan is for me? Or, how am I to know what footsteps to take? Or, God may know, but I certainly don't. 